Hello everyone, it is me, Matimus, once again with you. I hope you're having a wonderful day and thank you for joining me on this video. You know, lasers have been the mainstay of sci-fi battles for decades, but making them practical for modern battlefield uses today has proven actually quite difficult. Now, private contractors and government agencies have developed weapon systems that are making science fiction actually more of a reality. This was made very evident when Lockheed Martin and the US Army recently announced that there was a successful test of a 60 kilowatt laser system. More and more nowadays are coming out, and for the most part, as you can see in this footage, they're being designated for taking out UAVs, concentrated beams of light that can affect these little plastic buggers and knock them out of the sky. But there is a lot more in-depth technology coming out now with lasers that can actually potentially take out projectiles aircraft, and even ICBMs. The basic design was first introduced by the Department of National Defense by a robust electrical laser initiative program launched in 2010. Most laser weapons require a huge amount of power. In this way, they're stuck being mounted on a permanent base, which really isn't so useful if you need mobile systems. Over time, laser technology has grown small enough, yet powerful enough to serve military purposes. They have incredible advantages, including not having to store or deploy expensive ordnance and the near unlimited firing capacity, depending on the amount of power that you have available to energize these systems. And the limitations for that, for the most part, are the gasoline or diesel that you're having to actually power the vehicle that is energizing the battery pack or the generators to keep these things going. This isn't the first foray into the military-focused lasers, however. Lockheed's Athena 30 kilowatt fiber laser in 2015 was shown to destroy a truck one mile away, burning through its manifold in just a few seconds. This replicated a Pentagon test from 2009. The image Lockheed used when it made its announcement portrayed the laser mounted on the Army's heavy expanded mobility tactical trucks, or HEMET. This is an armored truck meant to haul heavy artillery for the most part. The weapon itself is a combined fiber laser, which means it doesn't actually fire one, but two lasers condensed into one beam, making it a hell of a lot stronger. It uses fiber optics bundled together where each contributes energy to the beam, making the process scalable. The particular laser tested, however, was a diffraction limited, meaning it was close to the place where the beam could no longer be concentrated on a fixed point. Apart from the many other advantages lasers really have, the beam is obviously invisible and with most lasers completely silent. Not only that, it's proved extremely accurate and efficient. 43% of overall power goes to the laser, allowing the rest to go to the truck. A senior fellow for laser and systems for Lockheed Martin told the Washington Post we're really at the dawn of an era for utility of laser weapons. The system will soon be delivered to the Space and Missile Defense Command Armed Forces Strategic Command in Huntsville, Alabama, where it will undergo further testing. Initially the system reached 58 kilowatt, a record, but Lockheed officials assured it would produce 60 kilowatt beam by the time it's ready, sometime in the next several months. These days, security and military officials fear of a swarm of weaponized drones. This laser system may be the perfect way to neutralize them. Let's take a little look at this video and see the kind of scenarios that could be placed upon these kind of systems in the future.
you know, that video is actually pretty well made, and it does bring about some kind of scary situations that can be placed upon with UAVs and drones. A recent incident made headlines when a $3 million Patriot missile as part of a missile defense system shot down a drone worth a few hundred dollars. Such a laser, costing maybe a dollar a shot or less, would offer a precise, versatile and cost-effective alternative. Not only can it take down a swarm of these potential deadly drones, it can act as a missile defense system as well, knocking out projectiles, and even protect against the overwhelming number of mortars, rockets, artillery shells, and of course, ICBMs if it ever came down to it. And funnily enough, this isn't the only laser system being used for the DoD's sights. Far from it. At the end of February, beginning of March, the US tested a 5 kilowatt laser mounted on a striker assault vehicle at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. The striker was equipped with a Mobile Expeditionary High Energy Laser, or MEHEL, which allowed it to obliterate militarized drones. It was tested for five days. The laser actually effectively took out a 20 pound quadcopter drone and in groups or either singularly each moving around 150 miles per hour or 185 kilometers an hour at an altitude of 1200 feet. This is pretty impressive stuff folks. The US Navy's USS Ponce already carries a formidable laser. This can take out light aircraft, drones and even small boats. It does so by heating elements causing ordnance to explode or by blinding the sensors. The Navy is also planning on introducing this kind of system to helicopters which allows them to protect against shoulder fire anti-aircraft missiles or other kind of shipbound missiles that may not be in view or sighting range from the ship itself. The US Air Force Research Laboratory has an offensive laser which it's fitting onto a C-130 Hercules military transport aircraft. Basically, the system is used to develop a High Energy Liquid Laser Area Defense System or HELADS. This is used for defending against pretty much anything and the Air Force plans to have lasers on fighter planes even potentially by 2020. So far it's been tested at the White Sands missile range and said to show unprecedented power according to DARPA. The goal of the Helad system is to develop a 150 kilowatt laser system that is 10 times smaller and lighter than current lasers of similar power, enabling integration onto tactical aircraft to defend against and defeat ground threats that pretty much could do all sorts of damage to either you know, tanks, troops or even aircraft on the ground. The Air Force is also working on a defensive shield, encapsulating and protecting fighter planes much like Star Wars or Star Trek. The difficulty is creating a laser bubble which would take out missiles, drones and other aircraft without really interfering with the airplane's own aerodynamics. The project has so far been quite successful with a laser turret which has been provided on the front of the nose for this shielding purpose. It isn't just the US developing these though, other countries are showcasing their own laser weapon systems, including the UK's Dragonfire program and China's Silent Hunter program. Each can take out drones, light aircraft, missiles, cars, projectiles and such, such as uh, you know, artillery shells, mortars and all that good stuff. Overall folks, I think this technology is expanding very, very quickly. A lot of people say, you know, this isn't going to happen, we're not going to have lasers that can be effective, there's nothing that's small enough or can, you know, reduce enough power consumption to make it useful. Well, after looking at some of this footage and seeing some of these drones being blasted out of the sky and some of the data and analytics that we're seeing, you know, being able to stop projectiles, being able to stop drones, aircraft and even now ships, I really think we're on to a winner here and I think in the next 20 years we better start getting back to the world of reality than science fiction that this kind of technology will definitely be implemented a lot more whether it only be for defending of you know installations or used on very large ships these are here to stay and I can't wait to see what kind of future they have for us in the military world. Folks, I'd love to hear your opinion on this and what you think laser weapons are going to be for a future kind of, I guess, prediction or forecast. Do you think they're here to stay or do you think it's, a, you know, a lot of hot air that's really not quite there yet? We're nowhere near uh, in terms of weaponizing these kind of things for what we really want them to do. You know, we're seeing uh, troopers holding these things personally held. I don't think that's going to be probably in my lifetime, but I can definitely see armored fighting vehicles carrying these high intensive lasers within the next 20 years uh, that can do some serious damage. You know, we're looking at railgun technology coming in as well. All these kind of 
high-end technologies that we thought would never exist, all these weapon platforms that you think, ah, oh, yeah, no way they're going to be able to produce that. Well, it's starting to happen, and I'm really, really excited to see what the future has to hold. So let me know what you think of these kind of systems, and if you think it's something that, uh, you know, I should maybe do more videos on. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like and hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, then feel free to hit the little bell button by the subscribe button. You can also go check out my Discord chat channel if you want to come hang out with me, play video games, or just discuss things. And if you want to grab some merch from the Matsumus Legion store, also go check out the description box below. Thank you again everyone for joining me today and have an absolutely outstanding day. All the best. Bye bye.